The warning comes from a coalition of health and social care organisations. The government says that it wants employers to recruit from the domestic workforce. Well, we can talk now to Danny Mortimer, who's a co-convener of this, cabin, of this coalition called the Cavendish Coalition and chief executive of NHS Employers. Good morning. Good morning, Martha. Explain to us why you think that there could be staff shortages. The social care sector in particular uh, in England has 122,000 vacancies. Um, and amongst its one and a half million workers, um, we see a large number of overseas colleagues. Um, 115,000 EU nationals work in social care. That's up from 58,000 in 2011. Uh, and we also see a further 30 or 35,000 non-EU uh, citizens as well. So a, a really important part of the social care workforce comes from outside the UK. Uh, and whilst there is an enormous effort to recruit uh, more people uh, domestically, and whilst the government is working on a long-term plan for social care, in that period between January when the new immigration bill comes in and 2022 or 2023 when we start to feel the benefit of the government's plan for social care, we're going to face a, a real problem in terms of sourcing enough domestic staff to work uh, in the this service. Is be because from next January foreign workers have to earn a minimum of £25,600 to be allowed in? That's exactly right. And the earnings in social care uh, are more like sixteen and a half to eighteen and a half thousand pounds for these care worker roles that you referred to. Should you be so reliant, though, on workers from overseas? Shouldn't you have been trying to recruit from people here in the UK? Um, the social care sector absolutely um, wants more uh, UK nationals to understand the, the potential to work in social care, um, the hugely rewarding roles that, that can be offered. But the reality is that for many years now as a country, we've not put in place an adequate plan for social care. So the ability of social care providers, whether that's care homes or nursing homes or domiciliary services that provide care in people's own uh, homes, um, the ability of them to compete in the job market with the NHS or with other sectors is really constrained in salary terms by this sustained lack of investment over the last 15 or 20 years in social care services. Now, the government has committed to address that, but we're still some years away from, from feeling the full benefit of that plan. So if there aren't changes, what do you think the impact could be on the care sector? Well, we believe that it's still possible for the Prime Minister to make changes. That's why we've written to him today. Uh, we do believe that it's possible to uh, exceptionally recognise social care roles as being in shortage and to offer longer work permits than the 12 months that would be proposed for lower paid roles. If we don't see those steps, um, services in many parts of the country quite simply won't be sustainable whilst we await for this uh, plan and investment from the from the government that will either mean that services will be restricted they won't be able to take as many uh, of our elders and and our family members uh, to care for or some services just won't be able to sustain themselves at all and we'll have to close danny mortimer thank you for talking to us